Hello there, this is Jesse Coffey with you once again for another of my uh, collection videos. This one is a shelf that was from one of those shelves that were really, really messy. And I needed to organize them, and I needed to re reorganize them pronto. Uh, these would be tapes on uh, 20th Century Fox and related companies. Now, um, let me think. There were certain types of uh, companies that I used to specialize in correct collecting and really make an effort to prioritize collecting um, when I began collecting VHS tapes. They were tapes related to Warner Brothers, Disney, Fox, and Paramount. Of these, all of them accumulated. My prioritizing of collecting all these tapes from those companies resulted in pretty messy shelves for them all. Uh, of the uh, shelves I have in the middle shelf, I would say that the Fox one is by far the second messiest, but the messiest of all was the Paramount ones, and we're going to go over that some other time. But for now, let's focus on my Fox and Fox related tapes. For this uh, far, I'm going to focus on some of the um, 1970s through 80s ones I have. And uh, appropriately, this is going to have stuff for magnetic video in there. Because uh, that was the uh, earliest incarnation of Fox's video division. Of course, they've now been Fox has now been bought out by Disney, the 20th Century Fox, that is, and running to 20th Century Studios Home Entertainment. But I've covered them separately. All right, so we're gonna. So we're gonna begin with my magnetic tapes. First of them is Patton, War Classic, starring uh, George E. Scott and Carl Malden. This is a tape from 1979 or eight, 78 to nine. Tape one has a. Uh, uh, part two has a like really long catalog listing on the back for a lot of their stuff. Part one has a shorter one. So here's the first part of it. The end label spell off a long time ago. Here's uh, part two. Uh, one interesting note about these uh, tapes, the early ones, is that they have a little hole carved out. Um, on the front cover, which will, uh, they'll just show you the reels if you got a tape with big reels. But if you got a tape that doesn't have big reels, it'll show you how much time you have left remaining in the movie. Which is, uh, honestly really interesting. Uh, well, not simply interesting, it's, uh, it's really quite helpful. Really, the word for it is helpful. Uh, I wish more, I don't think I'll, I don't think any other company adopted that. So that was definitely, uh, one, uh, quirk that was unique to Magnetic. Um, next one is Can Can. This is, of course, the movie that Khrushchev thought was very obscene back in, uh, the early days of the Cold War. Khrushchev would be the leader of the Soviet Union, of course. Which is now the Russian Federation. This is a uh, spring 1978 printing because uh, it's got a noticeably shorter, slightly shorter list of summer 78 printing because it's got a somewhat shorter list of tiles and also adds some. And it, it lists all the first 50 Fox films and also lists the uh, Charlie Chaplin movies and some stuff that was in the hands of Viacom. That's part one. That's part two. Next is the uh, film that made Marilyn Monroe a star and helped make uh, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend a standard. Uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes with uh, Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell. This is a tape from 1978 as well. 
It's got the similarly long list of tiles on the seam, the long list of tiles on the back is on the, uh, the well, part two of the patent tape I have. Again, the end label fell off a long time ago. Next one is The Sound of Music. Uh, this is obviously a much later printing of The Sound of Music on Magnetic, but it's from the first pressing run. I'll, I'll give them that. Um, it's uh, definitely a later printing because it doesn't have the same hole carved out as uh, a lot of other early magnetic tapes did. This is a 1980-era printing thereof. Uh, I'm going to show... So here's part one. This is And this is definitely a layer of printing because it has a uh, magnetic video of 20th Century Fox coming in between those red lines. And the MVC logo on that. And labels. And here's part two of the Sound of Music. Next one is a tape I do not have the, uh, uh, what is it, I, that I don't have the case for, and I made it myself, it's the Miracle on 34th Street tape. Another self-made tape I have on magnetic is, uh, the Oban, horror classic, of course, 1980 or thing. This one does not have, this one, uh, just comes in a... Tape continuing uh, in an RCA VK V2 125 case. It's Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, film I've never seen, but I always wanted to watch it. Maybe I will at some point. Next one is uh, a Charlie Chaplin's classic comedy, Modern Times. This is the only magnetic tape I have with uh, MV card on it. Now, notably, uh, magnetics. Charlie Chaplin's tapes did not have an ad on the back. They instead had a description and a uh, of the film and also a look at its impact. It's, uh, looking at it from a historical context, so, uh, that's quite interesting. I uh, have this with a a, a green lid because uh, this originally came with an RCA lid. It broke off, and then I decided to go for the unique step of taking the lid from one of my VeggieTales tapes and slapping it on there. Which was a pretty daunting task. Next one is The Producers with Zero Mustel, Gene Wilder, and Dick Sean. This is an AFCO Embassy uh, magnetic tape. One of the only two AFCO Embassy magnetics I have. Uh, has a sticker advertising a little wildlife fun on it. This is a 1980 cassette. Has a Fuji lid on there. There's the end label. You may have seen the stack. There was a UK magnetic tape in the stack. I'm going to show that in the part where I show my international tapes. Um, I decided to do, make that decision at the last minute. Next one. This is a great rock movie. The Rose with uh, Bette Miller and Alan Bates. On uh, this is uh, another 1980 magnetic tape. One of the first with full artwork. If you can believe it. It still has the old magnetic era labels, uh, the uh, ones that they were using when they started getting making tapes. Uh, this was originally a two tape set, and then it got reissued into just a one tape set, a one tape with the whole feature on it. Which runs 134 minutes to believe the box. Next one is uh, 9 to 5 with uh, Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Dolly Parton. Now, um, this is a. Uh, this says 1980 on the back. This was actually released in April 1981 on VHS. Um, the reason you see a 1980D on the back is because this was intended to go to video at the same time it was in movie theaters, but then the exhibitors uh, were pissed off uh, at that, so it just ended up being just a theatrical release. And 
Next I have the Stuntman. Piero O'Toole, Steve Rails back at Barbara Hershey. Classic, of course. Uh, surprisingly, this does not have the Magnetic or the Fox logo at the beginning of it. And it used to play really, really badly when I put it in. But I think the uh, playback improved somewhat later on down the line with a different VCR that seems to like it a bit better. Like it better enough to give it sound, which it didn't have when I played it when I played it back on another one I had when I was popping the first time. Okay, here's a hold me tape I have of the body of my bodyguard. Made my own Canadian copy of it with the CBS video stamp. It's actually a recreation of a copy uh, that had the. Um, uh, CBS Fox logo on it, but it still had the magnetic packaging. Uh, next one is uh, a tape I upload. These next two tapes are ones I upload in full to YouTube if you want to go check them out. One of them is Movie Movie, a unique comedic toast to Hollywood in its heyday. This is an ITC film. It was originally released by Warner Brothers in theaters, um, in movie theaters, but uh, the Warner logo is not seen at the beginning. Uh, this is a, uh, this is actually a pretty good comedy. Uh, pretty good spoof of a 1930s double bill. Uh, it's pretty hard to get out of its case, though. Uh, I'm reading a book by, um, a woman by the name of uh, Jane Julia Claiborne Johnson called Be Frank With Me. And um, it's basically about a, um, a kid from LA who uh, is obsessed with 1930s Hollywood. So he very much got behind this sort of movie. And this came from uh, a Rana Fleck in uh, Ithaca, New York. Focus in there. Focus was a bit off on that label for a minute. Next one is Suppose the Gave a War and Nobody Came with Tom Mule, Bradford Dillman, Ivan Dixon, Arthur O'Connell, and Don Amici, and Tony Curtis. This is the other magnetic tape I pulled in full to YouTube. Now on to the last three magnetic tapes I have, where they just had the tax magnetic video on the 20th Century Fox byline below it. Uh, the first of them is another AFCO Embassy tape. Uh, take, uh, uh, supposed to give a war and nobody came was from ABC. This one's from AFCO Embassy. This is uh, Take This Job and Shove It with uh, Robert Hayes, uh, Barbara Hershey, David Keith, Tim Thompson, Eddie Albert, Penelope Milford, Charlie Rich, uh, special appearance by Marty Mull and Art Carney as Pickett. Uh, it says, based on the song written by David Allen Coe. This is a um, tape from 1981. So we're at the last... Uh, again, these are the three last tapes that I have on Magnetic. Um, to go around... It's a pretty decent, like, work. It's a pretty good workplace comedy. And you get behind that, like, you can also get behind a lot of. I also enjoyed the plethora of, like, early 80s country songs that take up the soundtrack. Um, it's a. It's a. A pretty hard to find movie. And as a side note, this was the first. Ma that was the first magnetic tape I ever bought in town. I bought only, the only magnetic teams I bought in, in when I was in town were Take This Job and Shove It, Butch Casting the Sundance Kid, and The Sound of Music. All the rest of them were ones I bought online. 
from eBay or Amazon. Next one is uh, The Adventures of Robin Hood, which I definitely bought from Amazon. Uh, this was, I think, one of Warner's first Technicolor films, one of their first three strip Technicolor ones, to be exact. I think the first in three strip Technicolor. This is a 1938 one. Of course, it was in the hands of United Artists at the time. The part of the lid just broke off, unfortunately. It just got shipped. Chipped. Uh, there's, there is no end label. Someone forgot to put the end label on this one, though. Just, just notice the lid chip now. Next one is now Voyager. Betty Davis, Paul Henry, a Hal B. Wallace production. Now, uh, these are, again, the, from United Artists, and uh, both are pre-1950 Warner Brothers films. Both the United Artists, magnetic tapes I have, are pre-1950 Warner Brothers films. So those are my magnetic tapes. I have two tapes on 20th Century Fox Video, which was the label that came in between Magnetic and the next label that I have oh, more than one tape from. Uh, both of them represent the two forms. These represent the two forms that 20th Century Fox Video tapes came in. They came, one form they came in was that of the Video Rental Library with the black clamshell. Of course, both of these are United Artists movies. This one, movies that United Artists uh, originated. Uh, now, the video rental library tape I have is an English dub of Le Conge au Fall Do. And uh, they had a really long warning on the back of these uh, video rental library tapes, which is an. In, in, one of the ways of telling them apart. I also had this uh, number on the back and I think at the top of the tape which someone has ripped off from the back of this one. Uh, and of course the uh, the, uh, the cases on these were sealed tightly even though like, they weren't any cut up in the similar way that Disney things were but they were definitely sealed up in the same way. There's the tape itself, again with a pretty long warning. There's the end label. And yes, I did buy this at Bookman's. Uh, it was an unexpected find for me at Bookman's as one of my birthday gifts there one day. And there's the rental sticker. And the other one, this is the form that they would use for tapes that they would put up for sale. Uh, and it's a funny thing happened the way, in this case, the tape that we're putting up for sale is a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. This is a, uh, and uh, this is from, both of these tapes are from 1982, which was the only year that this uh, particular iteration of Fox's video division was around. Of course, these uh, would typically come in uh, cases where that would slide out. If you've never seen one of them, look at this. These would usually have the war, a little carve out hole similar to the ones on Magnetities, but instead of showing you how much uh, time you have left to watch the movie on it, um, it would show you the um, what the format it was on proper. So this is on VHS, hence the uh, in the key on the spine. There's the uh, tape itself. There's the end label of the tape. And these uh, these same boxes were used for VHS and Beta, which were both similarly sized. There were my uh, CB. Now, um, in uh, nineteen eighty two, they would jointly merge to form the CBS and Fox merged to form one video unit, which was called CBS Fox Video. So here are the 
earlier tapes I have on CBS Fox Video, one of which I made myself, and I'll get to that. Uh, first is History of the World Part 1, Mel Brooks comedy, which he parodies um, world history, basically, up until, up until a certain point. This one has a unique like, long variant of the Fox logo on it. At the beginning. I was trying to format the spine a little bit better. Now, this is a 1983 release. All the tapes I have in this form are from 1983. And this key, this one doesn't have an end label, by the way, and it comes from Pre-Spring Video in San Rafael, California. Have a scavenger hunt, which is uh, well, this is my proud of it. It's pretty beat up by now. Get out of the box. I made this tape myself. Made my own Canadian copy of it myself, to be exact. It's a tape I got in 1983. Uh, I uh, just put little markings down there, but I didn't put a label on it. Next one is uh, Belly Joel Life from Long Island. Is uh, and uh, I love Belly Joel. It's a uh, music. This is a uh, 1983 cassette, and it's um. Here the. Uh, and this does this is the original printing because it doesn't seem to work music there. And this is on beta. This is the only one of only a handful of beta tapes that I have. I need to get a player for them somewhere down the line. Uh, this comes to us from Sound Barrier Video. I have no idea where they were. Then in the heat of the night, another United Artists uh, license title. I actually put it out the back cover because, uh, well, the back cover wasn't included with this uh, copy. Uh, here it is. It's got a number of rail stickers there. 1967 Oscar winning Best Picture, of course. Now, let's take a look at the huge bevy of CBS Fox uh, VHS tapes that I have. And I don't just have tapes on CBS Fox to cover in this video. I also have tapes to cover that are on Key Video and Playhouse Video, since they were all three of these were the same company. The exact same company. Or at least connected to it, anyway. And, uh... And by huge bevy, I mean the huge ones that I have in cardboard slip cases and whatever other packaging was handy at the time. Next one is uh, Hello Dolly with uh, Barbara Streisand, Walter Matthau, Michael Crawford. And this was the first of Fox's first 50 magnetic tapes, of course. I don't have the magnetic tape of this one, as you just saw, as you, as you might have noticed rather. And this one is run from a friend that has the uh, first CBS Fox video logo, and then it has the uh, a Fox logo with the then current fanfare, which is, uh, uh, well, it's a semi-plastering. This is a 1969 Fox film, and it originally used the 53 fanfare for Fox, but this tape uses the 79 one. For some reason, here's a one of two CBS Fox prints I have of *The Sound of Music*. 
Yes, I have more than one copy of some of these. That's how deeply I prioritize collecting these box tapes and box related ones. Uh, the back cover is uh, identical on both of these. Between the uh, back covers of their two tape sets initially. So here are the two parts of uh, the sound of music. And the next one is the Towering Inferno. This I bought in 2014 because my mom was memorizing tapes that she bought when she bought her first PCR. The first tape she ever bought. And this was obviously going to be a copy of the Towering Inferno that she implied was the first one of the first she had. But this is a 1984 release again. Uh, released by Warner Home Video Internationally, this was the first time two major studios released the same film together, or at least produced it. There's a little sticker on the side. Next I have uh, The Adventures of Robin Hood. Again. Another, this is a CBS Fox printing event this time. Again from 84. Most of these do not have print dates for week in your code, so I'm going to skim through them. Next, I have the original West Side Story with Natalie Wood, Richard Kamer, um, Russ Talon, Rio Moreno, and George Chakras. I like this one. I saw the, uh, and uh, I like this one. I saw this, uh, I saw the remake of, uh, The Roadhouse Cinemas, and I, I gave it three and a half stars in my review. I liked it a hell of a lot. Would have been four if not for that casting of, um, that prick I'm not going to mention here. But, uh, it gets three and a half, because everything else about the movie, about the remake is gorgeous. It's, um... Uh, it's a, a pity Steven Spielberg won't do any more musicals after his uh, take on West Side Story. You really have to give it a watch. And you give, you, and give the original a watch, too, while you're at it. Next one is uh, The Diary of Anne Frank. Uh, sorry about that. Slip up there. Another 1984 tape. This was a black and white classic, of course, about the uh, one of the most notable names of the Holocaust victims, the, or the most notable one, the Holocaust victim of them all. Printed during the 14th week of 1994. 14th week of 1994, that is. But, um, that's right. But it still has the CBS box uh, thing at the beginning, I think, in black and white. Here's a homemade tape of The Revenge of the Pink Panther, another United Artists film. Uh, the, the box is starting to slip up a bit. Next is Captain Blood with uh, Errol Flynn, Olivia de Havilland, Lionel Atwell, Basil Rathbone, Ross Alexander, Guy Kimmy, Henry Stevenson. Robert Brown and Robert Cavanaugh, directed by Michael Curtiz, who also did uh, Casablanca. That's the another. That's a film that the boy in the book I mentioned when I showed the movie movie tape was also pretty obsessed with. But I have to yet to read the passages where uh, it mentions that. I just got that info out from the Huffington Post interview that was done with the author of that book, or Huff Post as it's called now. Next one is Yentl, a film I've got to see one of these days. With Barbara Streisand, with Manny Irv, uh, Barbara Streisand, of course. It's another United Artists film. This one has the MGM 
UA Entertainment Company logo at the beginning on this tape. And it has the second CBS Fox logo at the beginning. Most of the tapes I have have the, uh, have the third CBS Fox logo on it. And it has this uh, really uh, uh, this, uh, slightly layer reincarnation of their uh, 1983 label that was ver all vertical. And this variation of it didn't really last that long. Because they replaced it with the white label eventually, uh, not too long after that. Next one is Oklahoma. Gordon McCray, uh, Goya Graham, Jeremy Jones, Jane Nelson, Olivia Greenwood, Allie Albert, James Wedmore, and Rod Steiger. <coughs> Released by the Magna Entertainment, the Magna Theater Corporation originally, and. The video rights appear to have been with CBS uh, originally because this was released uh, through CBS. Uh, through CBS's end of MGM CBS and then CBS Fox video. But I think Fox later got the rights to all the uh, Rogers and Hammerstein films later, Hammerstein films later on. And this actually credits the publisher of all the songs in the film on the back. It was Williamson Music Company who published all the songs in the movie. Uh, there's actually uh, someone. There's actually a print date down here, surprisingly enough. Uh, January 29th, 1989. And this I think has a preview for their musicals at the beginning. Classic Musicals collection. Here's uh, the first key videotape you're going to see in this video. It's uh, Finders Keepers. This is a tape from 1984, of course. Purchased from Blockbuster on November 29th, 1994. Because someone, apparently, I think the, um, which was, uh, well, this has Jim Carrey in an early role. He's not credited anywhere on the box. But Jim Carrey's in an early role in the movie, which is probably why someone purchased it, so they can look for Jim Carrey. Anyway, this has, I think, a preview for Grandview USA at the beginning, and there is a, I think, also on the, um... oh, I'll have to look at the opening again. I think there's another preview on it. it has the MGM UA Home Video logo on the label for some reason. Even though this is actually a CBS theatrical film. So that's an error. Uncorrected error. On the label. Alright, next tape is... Norma Ray. Discard! With, um... Sally Fields, Pat Engel, Barbara Baxley. The classic labor struggle movie. A real must-see film for anyone who's into, uh, like, unions and stuff. 1985 tape. This apparently was rented out of the Northampton Public Library at some stage. And it also came from Video Update, because it has their, uh, like, so, it has their label on it, but it's got a real being blank cut through it. The really long Video Update end label there. Uh. Next one is Breaking Away, one of the great coming-of-age films from Peter Yates, starring Dennis Quaid, Daniel Stern, and Jackie Earl Haley. One of the all-time great coming-of-age films. This is a 1985 tape again, 1979 Fox film. Uh, it's actually a later printing, and it's actually a recycled tape. You can believe it. Originally printed during the 31st week of 1991, it was taped over during the 32nd week of 1995. But it still has the CBS Fox video logo at the beginning. It's by having a 32nd week of 1995 week in year code on it. 1995 and 1991 week in year codes, to be exact. 
Uh, okay, next tape uh, is another Playhouse video. A uh, Playhouse video tape. I uh, think this is the only one I have on Playhouse video. I may have to. Uh, uh, well, there's only one way to find out, and that's going through the rest of the stack. Uh, the Great Dictator. One of Charlie Chaplin's best films. I think is, I think this is what my personal favorite of his films, because it's a, uh, like really, anti-fascist in spirit and tone. It's real. Gives uh, Adolf Hitler's goons a real, nice swift kick in the rear. Uh. Doesn't mention their atrocities, of course, because uh, a this is a comedy, and b the worst of them didn't really occur until like the uh, like really deep into World War Two. <coughs> okay, next tape is uh, Billy Joel Life from Long Island. Uh, this is another, this is, uh, like, the only, the one I mentioned on CLG Wiki, when I edited the CB, 20th Century Fox from Entertainment Wikipedia article, when I mentioned, when I edited their, uh, list of tapes that had the, uh, back and forth between the, uh, FBI warning and CBS Fox video logo, well, this is the printing that does have it, as, uh, those intercuts, uh, and it's a 1990 tape, if I remember correctly, from the print day area. Let me turn the light on. The flashlight on my phone so I can see that a little better. March 4th, 1990 was the print date. There's the tape itself there. And here's another one with another of my favorite artists on it. The Completed Owl from Weird Al Yankovic. The amazing and almost true life story of a rock and roll legend. He certainly is. And he's also one of our one of the great geniuses of music. His genius rarely ever gets uh, the proper credit. That it really needs. And I. One day my mom and I. Will write a book. On the genius of Weird Al Yankovic. But this is not that day. Maybe some other day. Anyway this was purchased from Blockbuster. On March 10th 1995. It's a bit hard to get out. But once you do. You got a beaver friend. We ride when you reach the end sticker on there. And there's the label itself. Next one is uh, The Sound of Music. Again, this is a 1986 tape of it this time. Oops. Actually, got this out of the shrink wrap. Here is part one and part two. Then I have this is a really great film right here, Cocoon, when, from Ron Howard and starring Don Amici, Wilford Brimley, Hume Cronin, Brian Dennehy, Jack Guilford, Steve Gutenberg, Boreas, Boreen Stapleton, Jessica Tandy, Gwen Verdon, Herta Ware, and Tani Welch. It's from some sort of collector series uh, that was apparently a CVS on there. Uh, uh, but that, as far as I'm concerned, the CVS had the CVS the read out of this tape has nothing to do with the pharmacy. As far as I'm concerned. Here's the tape itself there. You actually take the label back on. Comes with its own the store's own personalized end label for it. Uh 
All right, the next tape is Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, in hi-fi stereo, of course. This is another United Artists uh, film. Yeah, another one. 1986, this tape is uh, from... It's a 1971 film, but it played in most of the country in 1972 from what I researched. It premiered in most of the country in 1972. Anyway, this is one of the great... This is the all-time great Jewish film classic. Part 2 has no label. Here's a couple of key video tapes that I have. One of them is the St. Valentine's Day Massacre with Jason Robards, George Segal, Ralph Meeker, and Gene Hale. It's a 1967 20th Century Fox movie, and this is a 1986 tape of it that says Valentine's Day Murder at the top for some reason. I have no idea why. Yep, dearly missed uh, George Seagal is in this one. There's the tape itself. Uh, this one has an FBI warning as a rental sticker for some reason. And uh, this came from Aristus Video Born. 330 Empire Boulevard. And it does not list the city where that boulevard is in. What a bummer. Which is incredibly helpful. <laughs> Next one is... A Guide for the Married Man. Also on key video. 1960, another 1967 20th Century Fox movie. 1986 tape thereof. Here it is. And... Yep, but another one with a print date, surprisingly. March 14th, 1990. And, uh... Next one, Yankee Doodle Dandy. That's what we're back on the CBS box thing for a bit. This is a cut down rental box of it from 1986. Uh, this was uh, mentioned in an early chapter of that book I mentioned, which is Be Frank Like Me. Uh, Be Frank With Me, rather. Uh, this is a. Uh, this has a sticker on inside the case that says Caution! Avoid excessive heat. Do not leave an auto. Thank you for rewinding. And this came from BNM Video. I have no idea where they were. Another one, The Big Sleep on Key Video. This is the only Key Video tape I have in a clamshell. And the only CBS Fox related tape that was intention to intention that I have that was intentionally released in a clamshell. It's from the Humphrey Bogart collection. And this is from 1987, the tape. This is, I think, their final release of this one in the United States. And uh, then it was later reissued by MGM UA. And then, uh, of course, Warner always had the video rights for this movie up in Canada. Along with the other pre-1950 Warner Brothers films. Uh, this says... We're going to turn the spot, deciding to turn the spotlight on one of the special films in our collection of Humphrey Bogart films. Check, collect all these titles of this legendary star. That's what they had on there. And uh, then it has uh, titles on the backgrounding films from Betty Davis, Cyril Flynn, James Cagney, and Gary Cooper. Amazingly, this was banned in Ireland until 1999. Alright, the next tape is 
Al Jolson, the jazz singer, the first sound motion picture. Of course, starring Al Jolson, yes, but you already knew that. Uh, this uh, tape is from 1987. Also, it was a 1980 remake on Paramount on Paramount Home Video, but I won't get into that now. It has a uh, someone's custom homey end label on it. Next, Birdman of Alcatraz with Burt Lancaster, Carl Martin, Thelma Ritter, and Neville Brand. Another 1987 team, this one with a 1962, the IRS film. Alright, next one is Peggy Sue Got Married. Kathleen Turner, Nicholas Cage, Barry Miller, Catherine Hicks. This is a TriStar team. This one comes in a pink case. This is the only CBS Fox tape I have where the borders that CBS Fox use differ from the usual, like, blue bordering on gray. Here's a tape that um, has a label I printed out and put on the tape at one time, but um, didn't have a label when I discovered rediscovered it. And uh, that would be Cindy Lauper in Paris. Cindy Lauper in Paris. And no, I did not make the tape myself. Next are a couple of key videos. Henry Fauna and the Grapes of Wrath. This is from 1988 this time. Oh, this has a... Yeah. A green little card in there that says, Thank you for taking on one of the classic films from our Henry Fauna collection. We're sure you'll enjoy one of Hollywood's most popular stars. And these are the films he was in, and there's nothing on the back of that card. The films he was in were on key video, by the way. Next one is My Darling Clementine, which is a, a little western that my mom bought because you know, she remembered my father watching it a lot on television. I uh, remember her father watching it a lot on television. Uh, I don't think my own father uh, bothered with this one uh, at, at all. Or, or at least not much. My own late father, by the way. Next one. A spotlight on Marlon Brando team. This one is Sayonara. License from the Samuel Goldwyn line up. One. Uh, this one, I, I put this one in. The Team Master does not begin for another 55 seconds, and then it doesn't have the key video logo on it. That's how I remember this tape. Next one is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Which my mom bought because uh, this is another, the only other Playhouse videotape I have. But this was one my mom bought because uh, she remembered that my um, my father, my late father, had a headline uh, from his newspaper clipping that said, Three Grow in Brooklyn. And a picture of him and his friends. On it. it came from some Brooklyn paper. And I have no idea. Which one, though? Anyway, here's the label on it. And, uh... And I have my one and only Elvis movie on VHS, Blue Hawaii. 
license from key video of course because uh, uh, on key video of course and license from Viacom which uh, yeah that follow me do rights for this movie follow magnetic around from uh, T video to Fox and then went over to Paramount after Viacom bought that company So it's probably coming out now, so I'm label. <clears throat> now, uh, here's a, a cut box uh, CBS box tape I have from. Uh, uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. I have a cut box CBS box video tape from 1988, and we'll get to that in a little while. First of all, we have Can Can with Frank Sinatra. Shelley McLean, Maurice Chevalier, Chevalier, and uh, Louis Jordan. This is the um, uh, what is this was the first time the film ever was released in full. In its entirety on video. This has an ad for the Great Musicals collection in there. Put all the stuff on there. This has a day and year code of the 235th day of 1988. Next one is Cleopatra. This is uh, the film that nearly bankrupted Fox when it was released in 1963, even though it was the highest grossing film of that year. But, uh, but it nearly bankrupted Fox, and uh, if it weren't for Sound of Music, they would be dead. They would have been like bought out by some other company back in the back in the sixties. If it weren't for the Sound of Music, uh, Part One was printed in September 10, 1990. Part Two was printed in September 29. Uh, but both were printed during the uh, 39th week of 1990. So, I have... Uh, okay, here is a... Part 1. And Part 2. And I have another copy of that. If I go up into the living room shelf... Here is another copy I have of it. This one formerly was the property of Army Helmers in um, Klamath Falls, Oregon. It has a different shell than the other copy. And this one's a later printing from the third, 12th week of 1991. And this was printed on March 9, 1993. Uh, 91 for part one. Part two was printed February 26, 1991, so a bit backwards with that copy. Now I have two CBS Fox tapes of 1980 of their then current, some of their then current hits, two of them anyway, 1980 ones. And the first of these is Wall Street. With Michael Douglas, Charlie Sheen, and Daryl Hannah. Every dream has a price. This is an Oliver Stone film. Why Michael Douglas the Academy Award for Best Actor. This is a great film. It really is. You have to... One that uh, really holds up years later. One of my all-time favorite films. And it's uh, got an ad inside from the Video Ad Network, which is now for the video head cleaning systems. Was it dirty or is it Memorex? There's only one way to find out. And uh, it's, uh, this comes to us from the warehouse.
Next one is the other one I've got. Um, and uh, by the way, most of the uh, rest of these are then Curran Fox film hits. Next one is Broadcast News. It's the story of their lives. Uh, William Hearn, Robert Albert Brooks, and Holly Hunter. It's actually it's another very good film. This team is from 1988 again. Really, really good movie. What I insist you check out. This one has a rewind 50 cent fee. And uh, doesn't appear from unless the video store where you have to be charged that fee if you didn't rewind it. Next one is a say any now we're on to the 1989 CBS box tapes. Beginning with Say Anything. I haven't seen this one. It's meant to be one of the great teen dramas ever made. So I really have to give it a watch. Now there are a lot of copies of this that have the uh, of a Simpsons short on it. Well, this one does not. And uh, also, it's a much later printing. Because uh, it was printed during the 30th week of 1997. And it also has the Fox Video logo at the beginning. Next one is Big with Tom Hanks. Have you ever had a really big secret? Another great American film from uh, 1988. Uh, directed by Penny Marshall. This time out. And uh, it's got a uh, thing in the beginning for... Um, yeah, we could preview for saying anything at the beginning. It comes from the warehouse again. Next one. Oh, this is a film legend. I have only the first and last ones on physical media, but this entire franchise, with one, with the exception of the last one, uh, is a uh, pretty epic. Anyway, the first of the Die Hard movies with Bruce Willis. 40 Stories of Sheer Adventure. A legendary American film. Followed by three good sequels and one turkey. Next one, The Dark Corner, starring Lucille Ball. This was, I think, one of her more like, non-comedic roles. Nineteen eighty-nine tape. This has a, a label that is a bit creased. All right, this is the most recent I have. From CB, one of the more recent I have from CBS Fox to come in, like one one of the very later CBS Fox tapes to have the CBS Fox logo on the back of the package and before they went to full artwork. Also, one of the last to have the CBS Fox logo on the front, I think. Al Capone, nineteen Nineteen fifty nine Allied Artists film, and I think this was the final uh, time they released anything from Lorimar before it was bought out by Warner. Nineteen eighty nine release, formerly the property of someone named Mary Sieka, who wrote her name on it twice. Uh, printed during the three hundred twenty eighth day of nineteen eighty eight. This must have been an early nineteen eighty nine release. Next, I have a, a key video tape from the Charlie Chan collection. Charlie Chan in Paris. Oh, yeah, this is from uh, 1989. Special case dossier inside! And there's the, uh, I believe, the dossier. In there. 
And this tape was purchased from Blockbuster on May 10th, 1995. So a couple of months after my copy of... Um, after someone bought a copy of... Um, after someone bought my copy of The Complete at Owl at the, at the thrift store. And this one is uh, another of those early Blockbuster stickers because it's really thin on the side. Although it's, it uses the modern, newer fonts instead of the like the brief ones. Ooh, briefly, love one. Next one is Memories of Me. This was an MGM film that was released in the U.S. on VHS on CBS Fox Video because it bombed at the box office. But it was pretty well received, though. I want to check it out sometime. Directed by Henry Winkler. One of our most wholesome guys in Hollywood. Next one. The War of the Roses. With Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner, and Danny DeVito. Oh man, this is a great film. <sighs> this is a definite Hollywood classic. Definite classic of really strange and fascinatingly weird proportions. Once in a lifetime because a motion picture that makes you feel like falling in love all over again. This is not that movie. Hey, it ain't pretentious either. Hey, it's not pretentious either. At least the front cover uh, it would indicate that. It's not pretentious. Uh, this was purchased from Critics' Choice, and at the same location that the Critics' Choice was. This one has a print date down there of June 14, 1990. This was, I think, Danny DeVito's directorial debut, and what a debut it is. Next one is the 15th anniversary of another all-time Hollywood classic, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. By the way, Disney did issue their own... Um, like 20th, 40th, 45th anniversary DVD of this one last year, which I didn't even know until I went into a Safeway one day. But I didn't pick it up. Uh, this is the original printing. It's got red reels, red uh, outline label. Let's get a link in your code up there. Of the uh, 40th week of 1990, and I put a print date down there, September 11, 1990. There's also a really long you know, uh, opening. In, it's bookended by a talk about the impact of the Rocky Horror Picture Show and talk of its fan club. Next one is uh, The Abyss. Uh, this is the original theatrical cut of it. I don't have the director's cut, which I'm told is better than the theatrical cut by a long, wide margin. This is a 1990 tape. Uh, printed on, let's see if I get the focus there. September 21st, 1990. And it was printed during the 38th week of 1990. The final tape I have on CBS Fox is Season of Fear, which I think was either the most recent or one of the more recent CBS box releases of stuff from MGM UA. Because they... Because, uh... You may remember CBS Fox actually sued MGM UA for... Like, mainly supplying them bombs. At the box office. And in the case of Sal, of course. But during that time, they just gave up on MGM you know, UA licensing, of course. This comes from Active Video. There's their end label there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this actually uses a DOS font on the uh, sticker label, which I kind of appreciate because, uh, you, well, for one thing, these. Uh, I'm obsessed with DOS games, for one thing. 
Anyway, that's all the CBS Fox teams for that part, and that's it for part one. Uh, next part, I'm covering my Fox video stuff.